The Indian Rebellion of 1857 was a major uprising in India against the rule of the British East India Company, which functioned as a sovereign power on behalf of the British Crown. The rebellion, now considered as the first war of independence, posed a considerable threat to British power in colonial India. Who would have thought that a year after the revolt of 1857 against the British Raj, a child born in present-day Bangladesh would grow up to get knighthood from the same British crown. This story is about a biologist, physicist and a botanist of the 19th century who was the first person to scientifically prove that plants too have feelings. Welcome to Science Saturdays, a podcast series that takes a journey to the past and sheds light on the achievement of scientists who rejuvenated science and inducted a sense of wonder and curiosity among the populace. My name is Shomijit and in this episode you will hear about the life of Acharya Jagadish Chandra Bose. Section 1 a study in vernacular. Jagadish Chandra Bose completed his basic education in a vernacular school. He highlighted how as a student he was unaware of any differences in caste or religion among his classmates. In his words, at the time sending children to English schools was an aristocratic status symbol. In the vernacular school to which I was sent, the son of the Muslim attendant of my father sat on my right side and the son of a fisherman sat on my left. It was because of my childhood friendship with them that I could never feel that they were creatures who might be labelled low caste. Upon growing older, Jagdish wanted to take the civil services examination in England. However, he changed his mind and pursued a bachelor's degree in natural sciences at the Cambridge University, later to return to India as an assistant professor of physics at Presidency College, Kolkata. In the next section, we highlight some instances from his life at the Presidency College. Section 2 Humble Beginnings when he became an assistant professor, India was still under British rule. Due to this, he was offered half the salary of his English counterparts. Instead of turning down the offer, J.C. Bose refused to draw salary in protest. After three long years, the college ultimately conceded to his demands. He later converted a small enclosure adjoining a bathroom in the Presidency College into a laboratory and carried out physics experiments involving refraction, diffraction and polarization. Did you know that articles written by J.C. Bose in the journal The Electrician were the first scientific papers to be published by an Indian? Sir J.C. Bose was an inspiration to his students. He instilled onto them an essence of curiosity by making extensive use of scientific demonstrations. Some of his students included eminent future scientists in the likes of Satyendranath Bose and Meghnath Shah. In the next section, we take a look at his views on knowledge and research. Section 3 the father of radio waves. Jagdish Chandra Bose was a staunch believer in freedom of knowledge. This was the basis of his aversion to patents. In a letter to poet Rabindranath Tagore, Bose wrote, If only Tagore would witness England's greed for money, adding, What a dreadful, all-consuming disease it was. Bose was among the pioneers of research in radio technology and demonstrated for the first time wireless communication using radio waves. 
almost two years before Italian physicist Guglielmo Marconi, who is credited for developing the first proper system of radio communication in 1897. You may be shocked to know that it was Bose's scientific contribution that was used by Marconi to send the first transatlantic radio signal in 1901. When asked by his nephew who the real inventor of the radio was, Bose said, it is not the inventor but the invention that matters. In the next section, we gain insights into Bose's affinity to biology and science fiction writing and see why he is known to be the first scientist to prove the vitality of plants. Section 4 A Love Letter to Nature Jagdish Chandra Bose is not only known for his two books on biology, namely Response in the Living and Non-Living and The Nervous Mechanism of Plants, but also for a science fiction book entitled Nirud Deshe Kahini. He was the first Indian author to have penned a science fiction novel where a great storm in the seas was prevented by a bottle of hair oil. If you wish to listen to the story written by Sir J.C. Bose, you can click on the link given in the description. Following up on his interest in botany, Bose invented an instrument to record the pulse of plants and connected it to a plant. The plant with its roots was carefully picked up and dipped up to his stem in a vessel containing bromide, a poison. The plant's pulse beat, which the instrument recorded as a steady to and fro movement like a pendulum of a clock, began to grow unsteady. Soon the spot vibrated violently and then came to a sudden stop. The plant had died because of the poison. A similar thing would have happened if an animal was placed in the poison. The plant died due to the poison. He called this instrument a crescograph and conducted further experiments. Most scientists across the world praised his findings. This was the first time when plant vitality was experimentally exhibited in a scientific setting. Unfortunately, despite his extensive scholarship, he is almost forgotten. Sir Neville Mott, who won the Nobel Prize in 1977, said Bose was about 60 years ahead of his time and had rightly predicted the use of N-type and P-type semiconductors in the future. Most of these technologies are now used in modern electronics starting from radio communication to mobile phones. Jagdish Chandra Bose was knighted in 1917 and was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society in 1920. Although he was knighted by the British Empire, most of us Indians remember him as Acharya Jagdish Chandra Bose. Inspired by nationalist ideals, in 1917, on his 60th birthday, Bose founded the Bose Institute. For the inauguration of the institute, Tagore wrote a special song for the occasion, Matri Mundirupunno Angono. In Bose's own words, he dedicated the institute to the nation and said that it was not merely a laboratory, but a temple. The Bose Institute is Asia's first modern research center that focuses on interdisciplinary research. Section 5 Word of the Wise We conclude the story today not speaking of the demise of the great soul, but the words of wisdom he left us with. Knowledge is never the exclusive possession of any favored race. The whole world is interdependent and a constant stream of thought 
had through ages enriched the common heritage of mankind. Thank you for sticking around till the end of the story. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Science Saturdays Season 2 where we discuss the life of Dr. Homi J. Bhava. If you like this episode, please do like this video and subscribe to our channel for more such infotainment. Also, please share this podcast with your friends and family so that more people are aware of J.C. Bose's achievements.